South, it's music by Robin Hood and his merry little band playing for dances here at beautiful Sherwood Forest. Good evening, folks. Hi, y'all. Yes, there's. Hey, yes, there's. With vocals by Little John, the chorus conducted by the Sheriff of Nottingham. And arrangements by Friar Tuck. <laughs> We are again, friends, and awfully nice to be here in your living room of setting ashtrays and things like that for the next quarter hour. Of course, you knew this wasn't the Robin Hood show at all. Actually, uh, it's the Bob and Ray show. That's right. And it's coming your way for the next 15 minutes, and I've been thinking... About... Bob, uh, what is your last name in case I want to... Elliot. You? Elliot. And yours? It's right there on page. Goulding. How do you do? How do you do? It's a real pleasure. Right. Shall we dance? No, you. Uh, no, I have something important on my mind here. We're we're doing all right on the show. We mm-hmm. get six morning shows. We got five afternoon shows and one big Saturday night show. That's right, partner. Twelve shows, six days, two ulcers. We're doing all right. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, we take uh, Hopalong Cassidy, Howdy Doody, Roy Rogers, Mickey Mouse. We're right up there with them, too, aren't we? Duty we are. I mean, yes, indeedy. Sure. Okay. Well, you've heard of Hopalong Cassidy cowboy hats and Roy Rogers belts and spurs and Mickey Mouse t-shirts and Howdy Doody balloons. Oh, I see what's on your mind. Uh, Our name. Our name doesn't even appear on a sheriff's badge anywhere. I think you've got something there, Bob. Now, uh, we're letting thousands of dollars slip right through our fingers. Mm -hmm. Bob and Ray socks. Bob and Raisin pudding mix. Sure, I think we can go along with Hopalong and Mickey and Howdy. We can do them one better. Now, all their products are for children, but we appeal to the adult mind. We do? Sure. Uh, think, think how proud people would be to own a Bob and Ray blue serge suit or a Bob and Ray letter opener. Hey, wait a minute, Bob. Hop along Cassidy with his picture all over those uh, cowboy suits. Uh, it changes it a little. Hmm? Uh, you see, when, when he has something made up, his picture is on him. How yeah. about uh, Bob and Ray wallpaper with our faces uh, alternating oh, all over the oh, wall? You know, horrible Bob, thought. Bob and Ray. That's terrible. Well, this really fires my imagination. Think of the slogans you could dream up. Bob and Ray face towels with my face on the one marked T and your face on the one marked C. Yeah. Uh, a slogan. A slogan for that? Sure, come clean with yeah. Bob and Ray. Then uh, there's another one. Bob and Ray beer stein sold in pairs, just a couple of mugs. Bob and Ray USA salesman charts for the country uh, so that uh, the sales manager can locate his salesman, stick your pins in our maps, then uh, Bob and Ray rubber soles with your face on the left shoe and my face on the right. Boy, what heels. Hey, just think of it. Our faces all over America. On uh, pajamas and table lamps and cheesecake. Yeah, faces on soap flakes, ketchup bottles, potatoes. Boys, excuse me just oh. a minute. Hi, Mary. I overheard your very brisk dialogue, and mm-hmm. I want to ask you just one question, if what's, I may. What's that? Have you two looked into a mirror lately and taken a good look at your faces? Well, no, actually... Well, go do it, hmm? and then stick to your radio program. And now, dear friends, to continue where I left off yesterday, in answering that lovely letter from that new little wife who signed herself Bridie. Oh, this was the girl who asked for a recipe. Well, why don't I read her letter again? I have it here in my purse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me see... Oh, Lance, I... Hurry along now. We have a Well, anyway, time. I can't find it now. All right. But she did want uh, a good recipe for ice cube. For ice cube, that's right. So we have one. It's an old family recipe, and I'll give it now. Uh, first, you need a dowser. A dowser? Yes, a dowser is a man who can find water underground, you know, mm-hmm. uh, with the forked branch of a tree or a large twig. And then he walks around the pasture... And when the twig bends down, if you dig there, you will find water. Yes, I remember a very interesting experience I had. Well, when your dowser has found water and the well is dug, install a pump. And I found that the little daisy single handle pump manufactured in Ogunquit, Maine, is the best on the market. They or still at least it those? was back in 1904. What'd uh, you say? Oh, I didn't think they still made those. Uh, when you order, specify right or left-handed. <laughs> Just a joke, ladies. <laughs> now, next, get a clean white enamel gallon pail and fetch a pail of water. You take this into the kitchen and set it on the chopping block, well away from the wood pile, because you see a little flying sawdust will give the ice cubes a mottled appearance. Now you take a a long, narrow cake pan about one and a half to two inches deep, cut up the outside covers of a lady's home journal or a hearth and home gazette into long, narrow strips, 
and place them in the pan according to the size ice cube you want. You listening, Bob? Yeah, sounds like a lot of work to me, though. Pour enough water from the pail to fill the pan and submerge the strips. Place the pan outside on the porch, well covered, of course, depending on local conditions, and just let the water freeze. Well, that's but I think you'll find these to be the most delicious ice cubes you've ever eaten. They'll mm. melt right in your mouth. Oh, oh I, I forgot to mention this. What's that? You can only use this recipe in winter, of course. You knew that. Well, I think we should uh, hear from the trio right at this point. Mary, yes. you, you sit down over there. Mm -hmm. Tex isn't here today, huh? I haven't seen hide and a tail of them, uh -huh. no. Well, maybe tomorrow. In the meantime, Paul Calvin and the trio with uh, this Leroy Anderson's. What is it? Oh, sure. Syncopated clock. rendition of syncopated clock. Really wound up. I ever heard it. But now it's drama time. Next, The Life and Loves of Linda Lovely, written for radio by A. Carrington Love, and starring Marsha Van Allshot as Linda, Sherman L. Sturdley as David, Uncle Eugene is portrayed by Horace K. Winterhalter. Yesterday, as Linda and David sat in the living room of their small house in Riversmouth, discussing events of the past few weeks, David had just finished talking on the telephone with his friend George when Linda, looking through the window, exclaimed, David, look, coming up the path, it's Chauncey. It's a moment later now as we hear Linda continue. Oh, no, he's just passing on. He's not coming up here. Chauncey's back in town. Yes, I... I know it, David. Hello, folks. Oh, Uncle, Uncle Eugene. Eugene. It's so good to see you, sir. Yeah. Where have you been? Huh? I say, where have you been, Uncle Down Eugene? Down cellar, counting by peanut butter sandwiches. How many do you have now? 142. I don't believe I told you the last count. David, he's Oh, the last I knew you had about 85, Uncle Eugene. David. Yes, my dear. He's as soft as a grape. But let's not tell him, shall we? He's, he's so happy. Oh, David. This is the greatest hobby I've had since I used to collect string. Uncle Eugene. Remember, I used to save short pieces of string in one pile and long pieces of string in another pile. Yes. Yeah. That wasn't nearly as interesting as saving peanut butter sandwiches. No, I know it. Well, we can see that, Uncle Eugene. Sure. Do you take the crusts off, Uncle Eugene, or do you just... Leave them off. Yes. Yeah, Wrap them all up in tinfoil. They last for weeks. Have you seen my x-ray machine anywhere, Uncle Eugene? I think it's upstairs, Linda. I saw it there the other day. Who took it up there? Well, I'll have to admit I did. I took it up to the laboratory. What did you take it up there for, Uncle Eugene? I was conducting some experiments on peanut butter sandwiches, but it didn't work out. <laughs> yes. I was ashamed of myself. Oh, David, he's as soft as a grape. Will Linda, I get him out of this house? should we tell Uncle stand. Eugene that Chauncey is back in town? What? No, don't tell me, Dave. It would ruin my whole day. All right, don't tell him. I thought you'd, I thought you'd left the room. Well, I'm going to right now. Uncle Eugene. Yes, Linda? I wanted to ask you this question. Fine. I asked David yesterday, and he seems to know nothing about it. 
What's that, my dear? I, I don't seem to remember. There's something growing on the lampshade. Well, this does look like trouble. What of Uncle Eugene and his collection of peanut butter sandwiches? What is it that's growing on the lampshade? Tomorrow, we'll hear Linda say... Hello? Be sure and listen tomorrow for the next exciting episode... In the Life and Loves of Linda Lovely, written for radio by A. Carrington Love. We had to give you something to do. You were here. <laughs> Friends, today we, we are, we're having an end-of-the-season sale of the Bob and Ray Little Money Saver Kit. The kit which actually saves you money. Yes, friends, the Bob and Ray Little Money Saver Kit keeps the cash right in your pockets instead of flinging it away in an orgy of spending. Now, other people pay, you don't. Here's what the kit includes. A two-and-a-half-foot collapsible jimmy so that you can open the rear door of a bus while the others are paying their fares at the front door. You get a set of imitation knee pads to put on while crawling under subway turnstiles. But that's only the beginning. Here's something else you'll receive, a realistic false face for the back of your head so that it looks as if you are walking out of a movie theater instead of walking in. You'll never be stopped. You'll also get a conductor's hat, a black alpaca coat, and ticket punch for railroad trips. Just keep walking up and down the train. Here's something else. A portable Victrola and recording of the Star Spangled Banner to get in all ballparks. As the ticket taker comes to attention... You march past. Eyes right. Record plays long enough for you to make third base bleachers. You also get a false mustache, a large rubber cigar, and glasses for theaters showing Groucho Marx pictures. Simply approach the girl at the door and say, Hiya, babe, I want to see how I look on the silver screen. Pinch her and walk in. <laughs> now you'll also get six folding paper dummies for taxi cab rides. Unfold dummy en route and prop up on seat. As you leave the taxi, slam the door and say to the driver... My friend will take the fare. He's going six blocks up the street. A white paper hat for cafeteria use. After you eat, put on the hat, pick up your tray, and exit to kitchen. Keep on going through kitchen door. And during this week only, we'll include a yesterday's newspaper. Just walk up to the newsstand, put it down, and say, ha, I got the wrong paper, one of the Daily Gazette. Walk off with today's paper to read on the way home on the rear of the bus. Yes, friends, with a Bob and Ray Little Money Saver kit, you can travel free by bus, subway, train, or taxi, attend theaters and ball games at no charge, and eat three meals a day on the house. Act today. Write to Gate Crasher, NBC, New York. Or telephone Montgomery 63498. That's only a one slug call. <laughs> That's our visit with Bob and Ray from NBC in New York.